Okay. AJ, tell us about that picture that you have. I, I think that was probably right before Dad joined the military. I, I was probably about four years old, and he still had hair at that time. Um, he lost his hair eventually, but um, it, was, it was a really good picture. I, I think that really shows you know, the bond that we had. And, and, yeah. Take me back to the night everything happened. I mean, it was just normal. We've been hanging out, like doing, you know, normal stuff. But um, yeah, that's. I mean, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. I saw somebody run at the front door, and the front door had been locked, so I thought it was somebody trying to break in. And you know, the way I was raised and the way I grew up around gun culture and stuff, yeah, I've been taught, you know, that's what you do. And so, you know, I, I grabbed a gun, and that's to defend myself. There was a like a bedside like nightstand, and uh, the top drawer had had four handguns in it. Then what happened? You locked the bedroom door. You grabbed a gun. And then I had called nine one one because I you know I thought somebody had been breaking in. And at this point, Dad's in the house, and um, he started like banging on the the bedroom door like extremely loudly. Was like pounding on it. I never understood why, you know, he wouldn't like open the door or something. But um he started banging on the bedroom door and that's that's when I fired the gun. I went to the hallway and of course there he was, so of course then it you know, it hit me. And I you know, I think nine one one was still on the phone at the time and I picked up the phone and I was like, Oh my god, you know, I I just shot my dad, so I remember the first day I went out to the lobby to get him. He was very shy, very withdrawn, very pulled in, and looked like a very, very little boy. He was so pulled in physically, but also emotionally. I was going to an alternative school, like a therapeutic school, so I was working on PTSD there and coming back to work on my grief stuff and the feelings that were associated with losing dad. And, and um, so that it's, it's, it was the beginning of the sessions. So I took him in our art room here at the Grief Center. And he was very nervous and awkward and afraid. My whole plan was to not even talk to him about the death. I knew that he was really gonna have to trust me. And he was drawing and chatting a little bit and he kept leaning back on his stool. He would stop and then he would do it again. And then all of a sudden he started to fall. The, the stool was going out from under him. And I had to literally grab him to keep him from falling on the floor. And he looked up at me and he said, you saved me. And I said, well, I didn't want you to get hurt. And he was, he just couldn't believe that. That came up in therapy with him um, for quite a while. He would bring that up. He would say, yeah, it's funny that that first day I came, you saved me. Miss Ruby Jean, she is, how old are you? I think she's like 12, maybe almost 13. She's very old. <laughs> when we first got her, she was really attached to mom, but then she kind of started hanging out with me. Um, so yeah, she's, she's like my best friend. <laughs> I didn't like the idea of therapy because like anything I'd seen on TV, it was like you're laying on a couch and you're telling this person about your feelings. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I'm really into this. I think the biggest thing that I've taken from therapy is probably like asking people for help and like coming to people because like I hated doing that before. And like I didn't, like I said, I didn't really want to talk to anybody because I just kind of want to keep it myself. And so I guess I've kind of learn to share my feelings with people, like if I have a problem. He wanted to be better, but he didn't know what that meant. To see him now, and to see how far he's come, and to see him volunteer at Camp Good Grief, I'm blown away, so surprised, so proud of him. for your heart and for your mind, just I have to say, I didn't know that first day that I met him that we would get to that point. He fought, and he fought to work on his grief, and he has um, just surprised all of us so beautifully.
ever since it happened, I remember sitting in the hospital and they gave me like a worksheet and they were like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to reach people, you know? And I've always thought that like, it's too heavy, it's too big to just kind of be like, oh, that happened and it passed. Like, I've always felt that I need to share it with people and, and reach people with it somehow to show them that, you know, even despite that, you know, I still made it.